Hello, welcome to episode 65 of Sir Nikolai Kateri and for today we're going to have Q&A again. Uh, this is part 3 of the Q&A series and uh, this is uh, one of the videos where I actually answer questions from different viewers of my YouTube channel. But for today we're going to be discussing first uh, a question that I think is going to uh, be a bit, uh, you know, um, controversial because uh, here in the Philippines, actually, the term island born is used for cats that are born in the Philippines. And so, one, some people have asked me, why don't I use the term island born ever in my videos? And I don't actually intend to use it at all. So, to my international viewers, for a bit of context, um, so I'm showing you right now, uh, actually, Facebook page, uh, where you would see many Filipinos use the term island born so many times okay and island born is uh, what uh, filipinos use to refer to cats that are born in the philippines and this is the reason why i don't use it at all <laughs> i don't use it for the simple reason that it is not a correct term it is actually a term that is made up and the funny thing is that i don't feel a filipino actually you know made that term so let me just uh, be very specific. So when you guys uh, Google the term uh, island born, the term island born is actually, it does not exist. Even at Google, the first things that you see with the term island born is this uh, children's book written by a very popular writer, Juno Diaz, which I uh, author I really love actually. And uh, it's about this, uh, you know, Dominican Republic, uh, uh, novel basically uh, it's a you know it's a children's book and uh, what is interesting is that you would have to scroll very far until you would see you know uh, something that is being referred to as you know as a philippine born animal which is actually kind of weird because when you think about you know different people using it you would think that oh that must be a legit term people actually use island born to refer to the philippines uh philippine born cats but when you think about it, even the term by logic is wrong. Because when you think of the term island born, island does not just refer to the Philippines. Like for example, Filipinos. When you say, hey, I am a Filipino. Do you call yourself island born? No. It does not make sense. Okay? And also, the reason why it does not make sense is because many countries are actually islands. So like uh, here, I'm showing you uh, a lot of examples. So, the Indonesia is actually, you know, uh, a, a, a nation of islands. Island-born does not mean, you know, um, born in Indonesia. <laughs> Can you say that island-born and then, oh, it's ja from Japan. And even UK actually is, uh, you know, an island. When you think about it, it does not make sense. Okay? Now, here's my theory. My theory why uh, people probably, you know, um call local cats as uh, island born i feel it has something to do with uh, you know expats expats or like uh, uh, filipinos that are a bit removed already uh, from uh, you know from uh, the uh, you know from living in the philippines i heard actually many times from expats and people living you know outside uh, the philippines the term pi philippine islands is actually used a lot to refer to the philippines and when you actually ask a common Filipino, what does PI mean, people don't know. <laughs> like, uh, you know, a non-Filipino living in the Philippines or who has been out of the Philippines for a long time will be the ones who would call Philippines PI, which is actually bizarre, which is strange because Filipinos living in the Philippines would not call that. My theory is that one of them invented the term island born or even worse, non-Filipino at all. You know, um, you know, uh, somebody who brought maybe expensive animals into the Philippines, and when they are born in the Philippines, oh, they're born here in Philippine Island, so let's call them island born, and that's the reason why I feel very offended by it because it's not, you know, it's not actually used by Filipino first, so I feel that it is wrong. I feel that politically it's wrong, logically it's wrong to use the term island born. That's why I will never ever use it, ever. <laughs> that's why this is probably the last time that I will mention it in any of my videos. Alright, so that's why I also would suggest don't use it. So what do you use then? To be honest for me, Philippine-born is better. 
So you have cats that are Philippine born. Great. So that's understandable. Or you can even say that, oh, my uh, cat is local. My cat has been born here. Locally bred, um, you know, cat. That makes more sense. Or even native. Actually, native makes uh, more sense that these are, you know, native uh, born Scottish folds, you know, local born, um, you know, um, British short hair. Those actually make more sense. And that's the reason why I will never ever use the term island born. All right. Okay, so enough about that. Let's now go to actually the Q&A part, which are questions coming from my viewers. And the first question is actually from uh, Fishbone, who also asked a question in the previous episode. And this question is about, uh, um, is it okay to put a queen cat, so a birthing cat, you know, inside a cage? Um, and my answer to this question is no. Don't uh, put a birthing cat inside the cage because the mother cat would need to actually move around and start nesting nesting is actually when a mother cat a pregnant cat is uh, finding a safe space for the kittens to be born and putting your cat inside the cage might actually even stress your uh, you know your uh, pregnant cat more so i strongly suggest don't all right so let your uh, queen cat actually move around Next question is from I am Ziano. All right. How do you avoid unplanned pregnancies in the cattery? So here, if you're asking about my cattery, which is certainly like cattery, unplanned pregnancies, um, there is no such thing as unplanned pregnancy in my cattery because I, you know, I have a cattery for breeding, and so it is normal for my cats actually to be pregnant, etc. But I do have a strategy, a strategy actually in my cattery, so. You know the the strategy is uh, to separate my two male cats so i have a male cat here a male cat in pampanga and i do plan like which particular female cat would be mating with which male cat that's the reason why that for me is very important because i need to know who the father of the kittens are so therefore it is planned pregnancy for my cattery now if you're talking about cattery in general how do you uh, uh, avoid unplanned pregnancy the simplest answer is basically just spay or neuter your cat so if you don't want your cats to get pregnant uh, or you don't want your male cats to start uh, impregnating female cats then just uh, have your cats neutered okay it's healthier it's safer particularly if you have no plans uh, at all to be a breeder a cat breeder and you have no clients or people who will accept the kittens please do consider spaying or neutering your cats because it will be so much better because there's just so many cats that are abandoned uh, around the world and so this is the reason why even i as a breeder actually would recommend please do spay or neuter your cat if you have no plans of uh, being a breeder all right so there, uh, next question is coming from John Michael Maravilla. Um, is VCO one tablespoon every day for each cat? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, there is no, uh, I haven't actually found the answer to this question exactly, but let me just tell you what I do myself. And that is, I usually uh, would put like two spoons of VCO to around 500 grams of uh of uh, cat food and that's it so i don't know how that computes and the reason why i don't do one spoon for every cat every day is that um it might actually do something with their system um, and they might actually poop uh, a bit more liquidy um so i don't really recommend uh you know one spoon a day i would recommend maybe just uh you know um um just try to actually portion it in such a way that uh it's not too much. <laughs> That's a very big answer. So maybe if you have a dropper, maybe uh, one, I'm not sure, one ml? One ml per cat, I think is better rather than one spoon. Uh, one spoon is too much, in my opinion. All right, next question is about uh, from Jeffrey Carcueva. Sir, um, do I mix the vitamins uh, within uh, the cat's food? Um, I tried that method actually. So I've actually done two methods in uh, you know um, in uh, 
feeding my cat some vitamins. So I did the dropper method, which is I feel uh, a bit more stressful, particularly for some cats uh, because they don't want actually the the feeling of being a uh, you know uh, being uh, what's that being held <laughs> at the same time. Uh, you know they they would just uh, feel uh, very uncomfortable with it. Um, the, the other method is really, yeah, of course, you can just mix uh, vitamins uh, in the food. Now, my only uh, problem with that is if you have many cats and you're doing that, so some cats will have probably more dosage of the vitamins than the other cats. So that's not actually pretty safe if you have many cats. So my suggestion is that do not mix uh, vitamins into the cat food if you have many cats because um, that will result to an even distribution of the vitamins. So I would suggest use the dropper if you have uh, many cats. But if you have one cat, I think it's fine. Or if you feed your cat separately and you are sure that the vitamins, uh, you know, dosage will not be uh, too much for one cat, then that's fine. Okay, next question is from Billy16. Hi, Sir Nicola. Is one pouch an entire serving of food for one cat? Do they need to eat more than one pouch per day? Um... Yeah, it depends um, on the age of the cat. So if you have kittens below uh, maybe 8 months old, I think uh, it will be fine. It will be fine to just uh, um, to have like half a pouch a day and then uh, half a pouch per meal. So one pouch a day would be fine. But if, if you have an adult cat or like even a pregnant cat, maybe one pouch a meal actually is even better. So you don't necessarily have to you know, limit it. But uh, like what I said in my previous videos, it's not good to just have wet food. Make sure that they also have dry food, okay? Because uh, it's good to actually have uh, both those in the diets of your cat. Okay. Next question is from Liraya, uh, Liraya11. Hi, what will happen if you bathe your six weeks old cat? Um, if you do it actually correctly, nothing will happen, okay? So the correct way is make sure that your uh, that you will bathe your cats uh, ideally using a basin so the kitten should be uh, fine inside the basin do not fill it up so maybe just uh, all the way about uh, just half of their legs is submerged in the water make sure that there's uh, uh, it's slightly hot okay so what I would do is that I would run the faucet you know slow pouring and I would get a glass of uh, hot water from my mineral water container and then after that i would pour it so i would use two glasses of water uh on a basin that has uh i don't know how to actually measure it but it's not full right and then uh you know that will be enough i think for uh you know for kittens okay um so for six weeks old uh, kitten i strongly suggest do not use very strong shampoo so adult cats ca uh, shampoo anti-flea shampoo never use them for cats that are very young okay so actually to be safe um, a gentle uh, you know water is actually fine but if there's really like grime or like dirt um, from what I read online the best uh, one of the best things that actually could be used for baiting very very small kittens are actually unscented dishwashing soap so um, there are actually uh, baby variants of uh, of a uh, dishwashing liquid so like uh, i recently bought uh, you know joy baby <laughs> um, and this is actually what i use sometimes for my cats especially if they're they're very you know dirty body part accidentally so i would just wash that particular part and i think it will be safe so that's it so any um it, it will be fine to actually bathe your uh, six week uh, old kitten Maybe do it also from the neck down and do not actually bathe the you know the head part. I the safest age for kittens to be bathed actually is roughly already around eight weeks old. So when your kitten is about eight, eight weeks old, it should be fine. Alright, next question is from Rose Garalde. I read uh, one article uh, that cats, both males and females, should be neutered around the age of four months. Would it be harmful to the cat if it's done at six months instead? All right, this is actually a very interesting, uh, you know, topic because um, 
the more I research about it, the more I find out that there are so many uh, different uh, opinions about it, even coming from the vets themselves. Okay, so there are actually three good ages actually for spaying cats. Okay, so one age is actually very young. So let me just uh, pull up my uh, website here. <laughs> All right, so there are some people that are actually doing it at six to eight weeks of age. So very, very young, six to eight weeks of age. That is actually even before the vaccination. Although I heard that that is going to be difficult for vets because when the kittens are very, very small, obviously the operation is going to be a bit trickier. And that's the reason why, while this is actually you know um, legit, the people are saying that this is okay, I feel that it's not the safest option. Okay? So that's one. Uh, there are people who say that um, you know six to eight weeks are uh, age for kitten to be spayed is okay. The other one is actually people are saying that it should be uh, new. Uh, the the cat should be neutered five to six months. This is the standard um, recommendations around six months of age. And this is also what I say to my clients and to uh, you know people who adopt cats from me um, that six months is actually a safe age. Because around that time, um, the organs or like um, you know the the body parts of your cats are actually um, much more mature, but not too late for them, uh, you know, to be uh, spayed or neutered. So I feel that would be the safest. And there is also another particular age where that is uh, it's okay for them to be spayed, and that is between eight to twelve months of age before being uh, at heat uh, before. Uh, undergoing their first heat cycle so this one 8 to 12 uh, months of age i think would be better for female cats uh, because um, and around that age uh, some female cats already start going in heat so before they do that so maybe you could have your cat spayed for male cats i think um eat, you know um five to six months is actually okay so again there are so many different uh, you know schools of thought here there are many different uh, you know um, opinions so my suggestion is below one year is probably the safest for your cat okay next question is from shara christine morales kirol i adopted an adult cat and he refused to eat uh, or drink uh, three days now acting sweet first but on the fourth day he got so stressed and aggressive he hides too also all right Okay, adult cats are much more challenging to actually adopt because they are already used to a particular environment. And that's the reason why I, you know, I tell people the advantage of uh, getting young kittens, you know, and that is after vaccinations over 3.5 months old, um, is that you can bond with your kittens better. But for adult cats, the difficulty about that is if there are already problems, you know, um, it's so hard to remedy them at such a late age. So that's the reason why I always tell people, you know, it's actually better to get uh, kittens at around four months. Um, that's actually the best time to get a, a new uh, cat, you know, and their age should be around four months. Now, what to do with the adult cat uh, that is uh, having difficulty adjusting? So I, I feel that um, it's really just giving the adult cat time to adjust. Because the thing with adult cats is that uh, they are going to be more hesitant when it comes to adjusting to their new environment, but they will eventually. <coughs> so my suggestion is just be patient with the adult cat um, and uh, just make sure that uh, the adult cat would feel safe, not threatened, no surprising uh, element uh, that will make uh, the cat stressed. And that's it. So really just uh, making the cat uh, feel more secure. All right, next one. The next one is, uh, how often should I give my cat a bath? Okay, your child will help. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, for kittens, I would recommend once a week, starting eight weeks of age. And then once they become a bit older, like six months, I th once a month is fine. And to be honest, for adults, once every two months or three months. So the more, uh, the older your cats get, they are actually a lot more, you know, a lot more uh, cleaner because they clean themselves better when they're adults. All right. 
Next question is from Nino Benito. Hi, sir. Are you still using AOZ? What's the current dry food of my cats? Yes, my cats are still using AOZ. So, I'm sticking with my uh, with my recommendation from videos from before. And yes, my cat, my cats are still uh, you know consuming AOZ. So yeah. Okay, next one from Car Karen Gail Lopez. Hi. Uh, can I request separate video for VCO benefits, different ways to use? Okay, I'll try. But uh, you can actually, when you Google it up, uh, you would see a lot of, uh, not a lot, maybe about three or four articles telling us about the benefits of VCO. To be honest, the reason why I'm actually finding it a bit iffy to actually do a separate video for it is that it's not 100% uh, scientific study you know uh, that people would recommend so that's why i use it for my cats and i think it has benefits for my cats but i i'm not sure that science will actually back it up so much so there are more studies that are being done so that's why i am i don't feel confident actually to produce uh an episode just about vco but thank you nonetheless okay and last question is from habanana Okay, so uh, this uh, person is wondering if uh, you can mix cat food. So like, uh, can you mix RC wet food and power cat kitten food? Okay, the answer to that is yes. Uh, please be experimental in mixing cat food. Because um, some cat food by themselves are not actually going to be palatable or liked by your cats. So I actually have a very, uh, you know, a very effective... Uh, strategy lately uh, with with cat food and that is if you guys know uh, Vita Craft Posi in the Philippines Vita Craft Posi is sold out in so many stores and the only ones that you have left are actually this uh, Vita Craft Posi that is heart shaped and when you actually look at that heart shaped uh, cat food it's full of gravy so it's uh, too soupy in my opinion and that's the reason why I tend to actually mix that to other cat food, which is weird. <laughs> but I actually mix uh, the Vita Craft Posey heart-shaped uh, container food to Brit Premium 200 grams. I would mix that together, you know, about two cups, heart cups of Vita Craft, and then the 200 grams of uh, Brit Premium. Um, then I mix them together, and that's actually breakfast <laughs> for my cats right now. So, yeah, I do that a lot. Um, another um, very good combination for me of a cat food is uh, chow churu. You can mix it with dry food. <laughs> so any dry food or dry treats also. So if you have like a, for example, dry food that your cats rejected, that they didn't like it that much, the solution is just add chow churu on them and they, your cats will, you know, uh, like them better. And But when they eat on the dry food that was laced or that was a, uh, you know, uh, glazed with a different uh, cat uh, chow churu. Uh, I think uh, they would eat also the dry food together. All right. Okay. So I think uh, that's our episode for today. Thank you so much. And uh, this is Sir Nikolai. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And uh, if you actually uh, would want to be a sponsor, please do the membership program. Click join. Uh, 99 pesos a month. I think uh, is. Uh, not uh, not bad, right? And then also, please join the monthly contest. Uh, on March 28th, we'll have uh, a live stream on my Facebook uh, personal page, James Nicolai, and I'll be raffling off Chow Churu. Alright, so um, for this month, the question again is, uh, the theme again is sleeping cats. So post a picture of your sleeping cats or make a post, social media post about sleeping cats. Put hashtag Sir Nicolai Cattery and just make sure that your post is public so that I can see them. And once I see them, you know, they'll be eligible for the raffle. And I will post your, you know, your picture or your post on social uh, on my live, next episode uh, that will be a live stream. All right. So at this point, uh, I've already discussed uh, questions that are from December 23 to January 26. So I skip questions that I have answered before. So there, uh, maybe I will have only one or two more Q&A episodes for this uh, month. And then after that, we'll probably have the live stream. All right. So thank you all so much for uh, watching this episode. Uh, and have a great uh, 
เด็กโอเคบ๊ายบาย